it's an absolutely true story about how I had to murder my mother, my grandmother and my grandfather in order not to be arrested as a spy in Poland. But I will begin at the beginning. This was during the Cold War. And of course, the first night I went out, got walk, went to a bar, got totally drunk on vodka and played the accordion and fell on my face, both musically, if you consider the accordion to be music, and physically. That later saved my life. Two days later, while I was on the ship, I found out about a concentration camp, an old concentration camp called Stutovo. And someone said, when you have time, you should go to visit it. I said, sure, I, I'm looking forward to it. The rules were this. I would take the afternoon off, go by elevated railway from Gdynia to Gdansk, Danzig, sit in the Chopin People's Park. When the bus comes to Krutovo, I get on there. When I get off, I try to find where the concentration camp was. Well, that was pretty simple. And when I went off, I saw a an old Stanley Kowalski type of person coming towards me, and I said in my best Nazi accent, Peter, wo ist die alte concentration langer? <laughs> he looked at me and said, ah, smile, the old good old days, yeah, that's all the concentration <laughs> So he showed me the railway tracks to follow that, and the spur would go off into the forest, and there it would be. Okay, all the Jews off, take off your clothes, we're going to wash them, etc., etc. So I followed this, walked into the forest about a kilometer, and there I saw it, a huge, huge, huge field with barracks and, of course, barbed wire all around. Being young and the same as I am right now, I thought, hey, I'm going to climb over this barbed wire, nobody's around, and I'll see if there's some old shoes, Torahs, foreskins, whatever you might find in a concentration camp. I climbed over, was looking, and there, inside the barracks, were piles and piles of machine guns and other kinds of armor, which I don't know anything about. As I turned around in curiosity, a little, I hate to say little old man, he looked like the kind who greet people at, at Walmart, came with a pistol. And I immediately said, Dobrze, dobrze, Jemstin, Amerikanski, I'm an American. We always think, as long as you're American, you're fine. But this was the middle of the Cold War, Amerikanski. With a pistol, he guided me over to where he could call somebody. And five minutes later, as I'm standing there, a Ziv comes out, a great Russian car, and a colonel comes out of that, surrounded by three people, a very, very nice man. And here's where the confusion came. Because I thought I had been in a concentration camp, an alter concentration camp. However, it was a secret military arsenal. So he said to me in French, why are you here? And immediately my brilliant brain said, Parce que ma grand-mère et ma grand-père y sont tués. My grandparents were killed here. I was thinking concentration <laughs> camp. He was thinking, are we using grandparents for target practice? <laughs> anyway, he put me in the car. We drove back to the military base. Everybody was standing outside because they'd heard there was an American spy there. And I said, you know, sit down, it's all right. We walk inside. He said, are you hungry? I said, no. He said, watch television. I walked into the room. There were about 100 soldiers sitting there, all of them getting up to give me their seat. And they were watching, I swear, six-inch black and white screen of a woman teaching how to play the cello. This was the America, the communist way of, of, of artistry, whatever it might be. Anyway, about an hour later, I was called out because the whole police force from Gdynia had met me. They were there. Apparently, the colonel felt it was far too confusing to know about my grandparents, so we were to drive off to Gdynia that night. More of a Polish joke story, because as we were driving through the forest, we got lost. And four, five of us in this little car were pulling out a map, upside down, right side up, to try to find our way out. We finally got our way to Gdynia, to the police station, and then began five days of interrogation. The interrogation was fun. They had a journalist who could speak perfect English, and he would ask the same questions through a translator every single time. How long have you been a spy? I'm not a spy. How long has your captain been a spy? I don't know the captain. You know, I'm, 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 I'm with the crew. And after the interrogation, we'd share a few glasses of vodka. I'd go back into the cell. He'd give me some books, newspapers to read, whatever he might have there, some communist manifestos. This happened for four days. On the fifth day, 
as the Bible might say. The ship was ready to leave and I didn't know what to do. I said, what's going to happen? And my journalist friend said, it looks like you're going to be here for quite a while. However, the accord, drunken accordion playing came to the fore. <laughs> Mystery solved. Because another visitor came to the police station, looked at me, started chatting away brilliantly in Polish, and everybody was laughing and laughing and laughing. The apparent translation was, you think this schmuck is a spy? He can't even stand up when he's had a few vodkas. Let the guy go. They drove me back to the ship. Everybody on the ship was quite impressed that I was a spy and that I had come out there. It's not the stuff of a John le Carre novel, but they did serve me extra cookies for the next four nights. <laughs>